made by now, you must be living under a rock. A rock named St. Thomas, where I'm the cream of the crop. I rise to the top. I'm the king of hip hop. 74 El Dorado. Welcome to Television Intense TV. I'm your host, Robert Lewis Tyler I, and today we have a very special episode of Television Intense TV Talk Show Live. We're going to have on today, let me go ahead and switch my glasses. We got the Prince of Punk, the Duke of Funk, the King of Crunk, the Mayor of Debonair, the Chairman of the Board. We're going to have on Bill McClure, Dr. William McClure, plastic surgeon from Napa today. So welcome to the show, Bill. I'm glad Bobby, we can make you. it on. It's my pleasure. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here as well. So um, I was going to say, um, he fixes the, the cleft lips in many countries, including Vietnam and the little babies. He does this on his own dime, you know. So he's a great humanitarian. And not nobody knows about what works he does, you know. So. We want to uh, reveal a bit more about this. In Vietnam, I, I love the, the people and the food, the beach, the climate, the jungle, and the whole culture mm -hmm. as well. What other countries do you, do you help these little children with the cleft lips when you fix their, their plastic surgery to fix their faces? Um, there are quite a few other countries. Vietnam is where I've spent a lot of time, but uh, these congenital deformities occur throughout the world um, in developing, uh, more so in developing countries. But um, I've worked in, in Asia, uh, Laos, Cambodia, uh, South Asia in India, uh, Philippines, uh, Latin America, uh, Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua, El Salvador, uh, Colombia, uh, Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, and then in the Caribbean, Cuba. And then Africa, uh, Madagascar, and uh, Central Africa, Burundi, and Eastern Europe, Romania. So just kind of spread out all over incredible I mean all, all the all the great things you're doing for everybody and you're going to I guess to Mexico like uh, pretty tomorrow. quick right tomorrow, tomorrow. morning mm -hmm. tomorrow morning yeah, so. yeah. yeah. and that, the Mexico trips a little different because Mexico has great plastic surgeons right. so this is a program where I'm working with my counterparts from Mexico City Guadalajara Morelia and so I bring a resident from Stanford where I'm affiliated and then my counterparts in Mexico bring their residents and we meet in Guanajuato where we're taking care of the same Type children, amazing, and uh, so the, the the organization I want to also mention is is um, research.org, and so if people wanted to help like with funding for this, mm -hmm. they could go research.org, and and donate directly mm -hmm. through that probably. As well. Well, well, that would be wonderful. The organization is a Research International, and um, when you say our our own dime, uh, our physician volunteers. Um, well, your own dime, I yeah, what I meant. We cover our expenses, but uh, for, for this type of work to happen, we need umbrella organizations. And research is, uh, to me, is the, one of the best ones out there. Right. Um, and that's the, that's the website for research international, is research.org. And uh, your, your, uh, your spot is Napa Valley Plastic Surgeons.com as well. And you're located uh, 1175 Trancus Street, right here on the corner, right? Right on, on the Jefferson corner. Jefferson mm -hmm. and Trancus, right there. Mm -hmm. Used to be Lions, so a lot of people don't know that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. and Justin just dropped the graphic for the, for the website, so that's okay. good. So mm -hmm. it's also in the set right there. And also, um, I wanted to say, um, how long have you been doing the, 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 helping all these children mm -hmm. worldwide? Uh, well, fortunately, I, I had a chance to start when I was in training um, just down the road at Stanford, and that was 1981 that was my first mission. Wow. And then I came to Napa in 84, and just because of my practice situation, I had very supportive partners. I was able to um, go full speed starting in 84, so still doing it. How old were you in 1981? Jeez, 30. <laughs> yeah, I was about, mm. I think, 25. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. About that. But... Uh, that's fantastic. You have a big heart, you know. And well, it, it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's rewarding. And um, I should say that the big part, we, we take care of the children and, and adults, but the biggest part is the teaching. Because, right. um, and that's how we gain leverage. Because if, if we can teach a surgeon in another country, and then when we leave, they're, they are still working. We're self mm -hmm. uh, sufficient. Yes, that, and in, that, in that, a, that's, a that's, the, that's the big goal. Because you know, my colleagues and I, we can only do so many operations in our lifetime, but when you teach others, you have that tremendous leverage. 
give somebody a fish or teach them how to fish kind of a well, that's exactly. theory, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Where were you born at? Well, yeah, interesting, I was born in Hong Kong. Oh, wow. my, my mother's Chinese. Oh. And then um, but came to the States in, gee, 54, 1954. Nice. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong. And that was British rule back then, probably. It was not. British rule. Actually, when I say came to the States, Hawaii wasn't a state then. I was born in Hawaii before oh, okay. it was a state. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. 57. It became a state mm -hmm. two years later in 59. Yeah, 59. I so remember I was, the day. I'm, I was mm -hmm. born in a territory you know, mm -hmm. kind of area, right? So mm -hmm. it wasn't quite part of the United States yet. So do you speak uh, any of these languages of these countries where you go? Uh, solamente español. <laughs> I do not speak Vietnamese, Lao. What, what about mm -hmm. Mandarin or, or Cantonese? Uh, no, I wish. Oh. Um, my mother speaks Mandarin, but I don't. Um, I just I only speak a little bit of German. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Vietnamese, I say like this. You got the right accent. Enough to get by, maybe, but only in Hue. And you're going to Hue pretty quick, isn't that right? That'll be a few weeks down the line. Uh, Hue in, in central Vietnam, that will be in early June. Right, Da Nang, Da Nang, um, perhaps? I, I've been there, I've worked in Da Nang, too. Oh, you have? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean the, and Saigon and Hanoi. A lot of time in Saigon. Mm -hmm. and Hanoi. Um, uh, Hanoi, I've worked near Hanoi. Um, one, of my, one of my children um, lives in Hanoi. He's a teacher there. Well, you'll probably be mm -hmm. flying into... Fubai Airport, so you'll like that. It's a little tiny airport okay. there mm -hmm. in, near Huey, so that, that'll be nice. So, um, have, and you also work plastic surgery here in Napa with with um, with um, clients, so, and not to mention any names. But have you ever done any celebrities? Can't mention names. I know no names. But, I'm um, just saying. Um, but yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like well, because your of, definition of celebrity, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Nap has a lot of celebrities. Walt Disney's mm -hmm. wife, I don't know, maybe Francis Ford Coppola. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm joking. Um, no, no. But um, but I'm no, teasing. I I I have a practice, and, um, and with two associates, and we, um, uh, Dr. Rebecca Jackson and Dr. Tyler Street. Uh, but as far as plastic surgery here in this country, uh, we we have our children with birth defects. We same thing. We have burns, dog bites. Um, right. uh, cancer reconstruction, these are things plastic surgeons do, and, and of course we do cosmetic surgery. I was going to say, mm -hmm. you know, you're mm -hmm. at Queen of the Valley on emergency call when somebody gets a car accident, such like that, burn victim, you're right there on the spot um, three in the morning, right? And we such. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some of your, I'm not going to mention any names either, <laughs> right? ah, but I've seen some of your clients, and they're in their mm -hmm. 70s, and they look so young. No. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I, I know some people, mm -hmm. and, and I've seen them, and, and I'm hanging out mm -hmm. with them, and they look so young, you know, and, oh. and, and um, I've seen, or should I say, I've not seen your work because your work's so good, you can't tell there was any work. <laughs> Thank you. So I haven't mm -hmm. seen your work because it's so perfect. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like that, right? Um, so. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because the cosmetic surgery, it's, it's I, I love doing it. It's fun, the happy patients. And, and actually, that's what really supports our overseas work. And um, helps a lot. You I'm know, sure. I've, and many of my patients have been very generous in donating. Um, so many of my patients are always curious and want to know what the latest trip was like. But as far as looking young, I mean, it's aging is a natural process. Um, sometimes aging is not fair. There, are those around us who um, kind of look older than everyone else in their graduating class. Right, right. Um, but probably more than helping people look younger, the problem is people looking worn out and tired. Yeah, yes. And uh, you know, a very common story is say a woman in her uh, 40s or 50s is uh, back in the workforce for various reasons. Her mm -hmm. children have grown, and and um, I, I've had the variations of the same story where a woman will say, "I'm working in an office with all 30-year-olds, and whenever a new client comes in, they take one look at me and turn around and find a 30-year-old, right. not because they're prejudiced against age." They just but, think they know more techie uh, stuff. Well, no, they look at me and think this person's worn out. Yeah. I want to get this young, energetic fresh. person. Yeah. So a lot of what we do in surgery is, get, is just giving people a refreshed look. Giving that fresh look, mm -hmm. yeah. I know I, I clean and sober now for like six and a half years. But, well, congratulations. Uh, you know, for years and years I'd be drinking, you know, mm -hmm. and that's all, and the doctors would give me painkillers and drugs and pills and sleeping, you know. And mm -hmm. That te tears you up too, you know, with the hot sun and all that um, combination, so, yes. mm -hmm. you know, so, but I, I think I look a lot healthier now, just, oh, just from mm -hmm. vitamins and nutrition, you know, mm -hmm. and exercise I think is good. All of that's good, and um, in fact, we tell people just walking. I mean, j just moving is, you know, if you could bottle the best medicine would just be walking, just Right, a little, and a little fresh air and sunshine while um, you're there probably too. Well, now sunshine, I know you lived in the Caribbean for a right, while. Right, off um, and on, 30 years. It's, the ultraviolet radiation is um, 
closer to the equator. Yes, but the ultraviolet the ultraviolet radiation from the sun really is a big cause of premature aging. Oh, oh yeah, it's, um, it's, the, it's the full, I think it's mm -hmm. the, the it's the, the main cause of aging is that you mm -hmm. know the radiation. Plus, I've been mm -hmm. X-ray to death with different surgeons you know, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Maybe we can drop uh, a couple of uh, before um, and after pictures of the children that, sure, that you've um, healed. Mm -hmm. um, well, we can look at some pictures and um, well, this is a typical before case. This is called a bilateral cleft lip. And it's an accident of birth. Um, the lip doesn't fully form. And so uh, these children, as they grow to adulthood, they have just a very difficult existence. In some countries, it's considered um, their superstition. It's considered um, you know, bad luck, or maybe the parents did something wrong. So a lot of these kids are denied the chance to go to school. Um, some of them can't really work out in public. Uh, but the skills that we teach, and so there's a before after picture, and that is just a 45 minute to an hour operation. Wow. Um, doesn't require, it's not a sophisticated, it's a sophisticated, tricky operation, but it doesn't require a lot of equipment. And on teenagers with this, we can even do it under local anesthesia like the dentist. But the big thing is we can teach it, to our, teach it to our colleagues. And I think I've got another um, picture here. Um, How long did that up. take, about 45 minutes or 45 so? 45 minutes to an wow, hour. Wow, that's a long uh, time. This is a little girl in the Philippines. Um, Again, same thing, you see, she's older, not an infant anymore, but you see as they grow, the deformity just looks worse. And, and these children, they can't marry, and here she is immediately after surgery. Wow, just and, a night and day effect already, uh, I mean. Uh, and she'll need further operations as she gets older on the nose. Here's another um, very similar one. This right. obviously is an, is an infant, and I think our after picture is um, still here on the operating room table, but. Oh, um, wow. So that, so those, incredible. Those are what we do, and and again, the big thing we do is is the teaching. In fact, I think I, um, yeah, here we are in a, in a teaching clinic. This is a, this is in Vietnam, um, but there's always a lot of people there um, at our shoulders to learn. So this this surgeon is doing the case. I'm just assisting, uh, in this case, him. Um, so te teaching is very important. Um, the the other thing that we take care of is is burns, and I. And burns are, are tragic, and actually, burns, it's a, it's a worldwide public health um, issue. Uh, burns are endemic throughout the world, um, and so these are just horrible, um, horrible examples of what burn scars do. Terrible mm -hmm. burns. And so, um, so a big and part of And you'd have to do, do the skin graft and such? Yes, we were releasing scars, taking skin from another part of the body to um, Reconstruct. In this case, if you look, you can see her lower lip is is actually pulled down to her chest, wow. and so she can't raise her neck. But what we do is we we Terrible. it is and it, it, very difficult existence. Um, and, and in you fact, can, and you can fix that. Though. Well, we can help it quite it a bit. Get much better. Yes, improve function. Um, in Research International, um, one of the reasons I do so much work with them is it, they're really the only plastic surgery organization that really um, um, places a big emphasis on this burn reconstruction. Right. And that's, that's probably the most common thing that we do around the world. Mm. Uh, you're, you're a great humanitarian to help all these children um, all over the world. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's fun, <laughs> but it's, it's just... Um, it's rewarding? It, it's rewarding, but it's just kind of the reason, well, the reason I went into plastic surgery um, was for the opportunity to do this. Mm -hmm. We even had like uh, uh, nominees for uh, awards today. We had uh, Jessica Loring and Bill McClure, and, and the winner <laughs> is. Uh, 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 I, I know, uh, I know, oh. I know Jessica. <laughs> Dr. William McClure. Okay. And, and, well, and, we do, and we did, and we do have <laughs> the Humanitarian of, of the Year award <laughs> for you. So we, well, we that's had, very nice. Oh, you. This, oh while, you're while, serious. While we're at, yeah, while we're at the uh, well, how nice, award right? ceremony. So. Humanitarian award presented by Tyler Vision. Well, thank so, you. So we, we got you. You are appreciated. You are worth it. And you've done <laughs> well, fantastic. You. Done mm -hmm. great works. You know, all over, all over the world. And um, did um, uh, yeah, I just told him Mick, Mickey Rourke did, did his sur plastic <laughs> surgery. Did, he did my <laughs> surgery. He had the same guy, <laughs> same doctor. No, it's kite. No, I won't mention any names, right? So, and. The anesthesiologists, 
you mm -hmm. actually could do face surgery without mm -hmm. putting somebody under, um, right? Because I don't do drugs or alcohol. So no. <laughs> if, oh. I ever, if I ever pay to have something mm -hmm. done, you could just like, just local, maybe anesthetic. Well, it's perhaps. true. I mean, you can't, um, you can't really do major surgery with anesthesia. But I'm tough. I could, okay. <laughs> well, well for, so for our, our overseas work, it's not just surgeons because um, we can't, obviously can't function with, without anesthesiologists. Right. So we have very dedicated and very skilled anesthesiologists that travel with us, very skilled nurses, both operating room and recovery. Uh, we have translators who come. So it's, it's a team effort. Yeah. Of course, because if you had a baby, you can't just say, oh, just hold still, right? You know, you have to put them under until this is yes, all finished. It, it, and know? not only that, it's, it's very scary yeah. because in some, of, the, some of our sites, we're not really uh, well equipped like we are in this country. So the anesthesiologists have to be even better. I mean, they have to be right. far at the top of their field because to operate under difficult con conditions. Um, it to, they have um, to monitor everything, the profile mm -hmm. and all that. And um, they monitor everything. Watch them and the breathing and, and oxygen and just yes, it's a it's a complex thing, more uh, complex than what I do. Um, and part of them, uh, an organization such as Resurge, they are, um, you know, providing the anesthesia machines, the medicines, the and that comes from the donations. That's a good. That's a great organization. If any of you wants to give money to uh, Resurge, Resurge.org, and uh, that's Resurge International's um, website. They can. Mm -hmm. A nonprofit, and they can give to that. There, it's a graphic draft right there. Oh, and, great! Uh, Thank you. Anybody mm -hmm. can just tune into that on uh, interwebby thingy, right? Yes, <laughs> so yes. We um, can go. <laughs> you know, oh, and as far as what you're saying about your own face, for the uh, cosmetic surgery, when we're doing uh, faces and eyelids and noses, that we are able to do uh, with local anesthesia and sedation. Sure. So pa patients are very comfortable, but it does not require general anesthesia. I don't even need the local anesthesia. <laughs> we, we're tough, right? We're Tyler, so we're tough. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I told you my friend in the 1970s, he did some plastic mm -hmm. surgery. He had the the gold, um, the the clip. What do you call the the that looks like pierces? Oh, like, that's our needle holders. We have them. Gold mm -hmm. and to repel the blood, and then diamond tip for the grip because it was mm -hmm. such a the diamond tip. The, the things last longer. The, they the still do that. Last um, well, much. we you have to have good instruments. And um, instruments are expensive, but we take good care of them. We, um, I, I always worry. I've got about four thousand dollars worth of instruments in my suitcase for tomorrow, right. and I'm always worried the airline's going to lose them, or oh, more yeah. so if they lose them, then I'm stuck. You can't take it carry on because there's a mm -hmm. knife in there. <laughs> so, and knife know, and so, scissors, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah, I mean they've messed my luggage up. I found a letter this morning saying, "Hey, we damaged your luggage," you know? so, mm -hmm. so you know. JetBlue, thank you. And, <laughs> and, uh, so, um, so when did you first realize that you wanted to be a, a doctor? How old were you? Like uh, three? No, <laughs> no I, not th well, I think a doctor, uh, pretty much in high school. Yeah. Um, there are no other physicians in my family, and then um, and once you have to make that commitment in college because of pre-med. Um, but as far as surgery, and, and while I was in um, college, I worked night shift as an emergency room orderly, and so oh, great. Yeah. Um, and that's what gave me the interest in surgery. And though I saw plastic surgeons in the emergency room, I never thought that would be me. I thought I'd be a trauma surgeon, a heart surgeon. Um, but while in med school in San Diego, I had the opportunity to go on a short trip to Mexico. And as soon as I saw my first cleft lip, and it was a skilled surgeon, took him about a half an hour, and I saw this little baby's life change, I thought, well, gee, this is what I want to do. And then I had to shift gears and do everything I could to get accepted to a Stanford's plastic surgery program. That's admirable mm -hmm. in itself, um, you know. So. Uh, well, it was it was a worthwhile goal for me because um, once I got into Stanford's program, and the reason I wanted to go to Stanford is they stressed international volunteer work. And Great, so yeah. as a as a resident, I was able to go on seven trips, and that really sealed my fate. Fantastic, and so mm -hmm. also I, I was going to say um, the. Uh, you, you actually invented a, a workout regimen called the McClure's, you know, oh. where you're doing Well, the, I don't know about uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone at the gym said. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, that, that, that's pretty, I've, I've been trying to incorporate that okay. into my uh, routine. Well, it's, it's supposed to help your surfing, so. Right. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be out there, uh, born in Hawaii. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
And you guys, do you guys incorporate uh, liposuction sometimes? Um, liposuction is a is not a, not for the kids, oh, but yeah. for the people uh, in Napa. You uh, know. Well, it's it's a cosmetic procedure. It's, it's it's very popular. It's it's not for everyone, but um, yeah, it's one of the cosmetic surgeries right. that we do that make people happy. First, you just tell me, you know, you just go. Mm -hmm. Get on the treadmill and diet for a little while first, and oh, then yeah. we'll talk about right well, <laughs> something like that. Right? Uh, well, that oh. helps too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got like six percent body fat. I wish back in <laughs> back in the day. So, I was gonna mm -hmm. say. Um, also, after we do this show, it'll come up on on um, YouTube, Pinterest, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, oh, Facebook, mm -hmm. and then it's on Comcast Twenty Eight in a few months. I should have worn a tie. Valley, no, you 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 wear what you feel comfortable. I mm -hmm. feel comfortable with suit and tie, so I mm -hmm. got like twenty of them now. And then ninety nine U verse in the Bay Area, and then live streaming. It'll be on archives here in the in the area, so anybody mm -hmm. can um, watch it. So who were your your um, role models and um, mentors or heroes? I think you just kind of told me oh. when you <laughs> saw that guy. You well, know, he was one back of them. in the that day. Was Dr. Ross Rudolph, who's still practicing in San Diego. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of corny, but for, for my generation, there was um, Albert Schweitzer, <laughs> and he was a, a, a medical missionary in Central Africa, and very selfless man, and uh, and he, it was a kind of a romanticized version of you know working in um, deep dark Africa, taking care of people. But um, but the actual mentors were well, Dr. Donald Donald Laub, who founded Research International. Uh, he was the chief of Stanford's plastic surgery program, and he was the one who encouraged the overseas work. And, and this was at a time where there were very few plastic surgeons doing the overseas teaching. So Dr. Lau, he was my big mentor. And um, interestingly, he has, he's written his memoirs are gonna come out next year. And the two big achievements in his life, one was this international overseas work and founding this organization. Right. The second, he is one of the pioneers of transgender surgery. Oh, one fantastic. of the godfathers of transgender surgery, wow. which back when I met him was a big no-no. Right, yeah, yeah, of and, course. Um, right, in yes, fact, Stanford yeah. wouldn't even let him operate at Stanford. He had to go to San Mateo County Hospital to do the cases. Well, obviously, that's all changed, but, um, but he saw two groups of people in need. He saw mm -hmm. kids who weren't, didn't have access to reconstruction, and he saw these very tortured um, trans people who had no access to, um, to help. Right, and, and he was from um, Africa, did you say? So? Uh, Dr. Lobb, he was a Stanford professor. Okay, yeah. But yeah. it was just, he um, just wanted to go out of his way instead of stay in his little academic bubble. He wanted to right. go overseas and help kids, and he wanted to help those at home who were just living a very what, miserable what, existence. What parts of Africa were, were oh, you in, too, um, well, as I, well? I worked in Central Africa, in the, okay. um, and Burundi is the country. Um, I haven't done as much work there yet because we're trying to, fund and build a hospital there. And it, mm -hmm. I think we showed some of the oh, pictures, I I, didn't we, yeah, of Africa? We, I have a few pictures I think we showed Africa. a couple of them. Oh, not yet. There, I think there's some on there. Yeah, um, we can mm -hmm. check out a couple. There we go. Yeah, um, um, yeah this is a, a young man waiting to be operated upon. Uh, this is in Burundi, and uh, there's a few more pictures. Uh, it's a, another child, a desperately poor country, and when Bur I do... How do you pronounce it? Burun Burundi? Uh, Burundi. Burundi. B-U-R, Burundi. 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 Um, just beautiful people, um, beautiful children. In fact, one of my kids um, taught school there for a while. Wow. And so, uh, and as all the places we go, there are mothers who do anything for their child. But it's a, it's a nice country. It's some, um, here we are. <laughs> uh, but when we do start working here, it's going to be the situation where many of our patients will be um, teenagers, adults, because there have been, there's been no access to care. And just another, um, exactly. A lucky girl who's going to be getting surgery the next day. Nice. Yeah. Lucky. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And and so your kids are teachers, or um, pretty much. Actually, um, my two sons are both teachers, and then um, uh, one daughter's a nurse, and uh, one daughter is a nanny in grad school. And and they teach mm -hmm. um, overseas mm -hmm. as well, um, uh, Africa, well, or uh, Vietnam, and the one Hanoi taught and such. in Africa. He taught in Russia, and now he's teaching in Hanoi. Wow. Um, but um, as a teacher, it's much cheaper to live in Hanoi than San Francisco. Oh yeah, and and mm -hmm. and, uh, and Hanoi is a big city, you know, yeah. too. Um, and so, mm -hmm. and then uh, and my other son, he's a special ed teacher, middle school, and he's in um, Compton of all places. 
And nice. so it's a very challenging um, right. environment for him, but he, uh, he loves it. I think my mm -hmm. younger son's mother was from, I think, Compton, mm -hmm. <laughs> in that same area right there. Mm -hmm. So luckily he was um, blessed enough to live in the Napa Valley and go to private schools, you know, oh, and mm -hmm. such, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, lucky for him, right? So we only got about three minutes left. Okay. Um, see how fast it goes? Half hours sure. like gone <laughs> and, and, and like, mm -hmm. uh, like nothing, right? So is any... Um, Shout mm. outs you wanted to do, or mm. any any um, any um, mm. other websites or um, uh, phone numbers. You know. sure. Well, let me let me give out your phone number real okay. quick in case mm. somebody needs your help mm -hmm. uh, or needs to donate money to a nonprofit. Is seven zero seven two five eight six zero five three. Um, thank you. That's the office number. You know, the, the one shout I'd li like to give, and I can't mention names because no. it's. Um, uh, the people in Napa have been extremely generous from from day one when I came here in '84, and we've had fundraisers. Um, well, one name I can mention, Robert Mondavi. For right. Many years he would donate wine. Uh, they donated their facility for fundraisers. But just individual citizens throughout town have, you know, for the last 33 years have donated a lot. Um, we had there was a gigantic hurricane in Honduras in '98, Hurricane Mitch, and there were four of us from Napa who were actually on a team working there when the hurricane hit. So there was a little bit of a local angle. The paper wrote it up. And we, just the outpouring of support. We had supplies and money. Um, but, and my most recent, recent project is in Cuba. And there's a citizen in town. And I cannot mention his name. Right. But he's raised $90,000 for the wow. Cuba project. Um, Ten That's years fantastic. ago, he raised 250000 for that project. When nice. I say raised, a big part of it was out of his pocket. Right. And then um, that project in Africa. Uh, he got intimately involved with that and even went to Africa to visit. Um, and he's probably donated and raised about 250000 for that. Um, People are really opening up their hearts um, here in the Napa Valley. It's a, it's a wonderful place to live, as you know. It, it, mm -hmm. it, we're, we're just blessed to live here. It's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. So pretty much i got to just read out to my sponsors, right, you know, and all that, <laughs> right? So I say, uh, mm -hmm. The uh, celebrity guest of the television show stay in Saigon, right? <laughs> Transportation <laughs> provided by Sitlo. We'd like to thank our guest, Mr. William McClure, Dr. William McClure mm -hmm. here, right here on the set. And we also want to thank our sponsors. We got Sal, the flower guy. He's across from the high school. If anybody needs flowers, Doc's Trophy Shop makes our music awards and other awards uh, daily. And then we want to thank Hair in Motion. Also, Emmy Lou's mm -hmm. Diner over in the... River Park, parking lot right there. Thanks, Ruben. And uh, everybody in our live studio to audience out here, they get like a, a, a new car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not very big cars, but they get, they get new. And since nobody showed up, no, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. And then, and then this is, this, don't sell this on Amazon because it's worth a lot of money, right? But you get, uh, this is a parting gift you'll never part with. Mm. Uh, you get a actual headshot oh. <laughs> of, no, I'm just, this is a joke. Yes. So, anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can sell that on Amazon for like, I don't know, $50,000 or something <laughs> later, right? So pretty much we're out of here. So God mm. bless you and yours. And until next time, America, ah, pretty much we're out of here. And <laughs>